we should decriminalise drugs. It'd be better for addicts, it'd be better for society at large, and it'd be better for our working class communities. <laughs> Now, first of all, in any discussion about the petty crime associated with drugs, the mainstream media and the established politicians will tend to forget that the worst crimes that happen in society are white collar crimes. I mean, it's bankers, vulture funds and developers and the politicians they keep on a leash that sink entire economies. But even though we understand that, drugs do have a corrosive effect on working class communities. I grew up in Fatima mansions in the 1980s. And although most people in Fatima mansions were hard-working families who had employment in the 50s and 60s, in 1977 when the Irish economy fell off a cliff and collapsed, it was places like Fatima mansions that were hit with massive unemployment. Unemployment led to hopelessness and despair. It was from the soil of hopelessness that heroin could get purchase in an area like that. Government neglect of areas like that exposed their complete hypocrisy when the establishment tries to deal with drugs through a law and order response. They take hope from people, they push people into drug taking, and then they criminalise them. It's not people like Leo Varadkar that will be victims of the petty crime associated with drug taking. It's people like my grandmother who was mugged on our way back from bingo late one night in Basin Lane. So how would decriminalisation solve these problems and improve lives for working class people? We have an example right in front of our eyes. Here in Europe, Portugal has decriminalised drugs. What was the consequence of the decriminalisation? Crime collapsed. In the 1980s, Portugal had a heroin e epidemic, much like some of the poorer areas in Dublin. But in 2001, they decriminalised possession and consumption of all drugs. If someone's caught with drugs, they're referred to a doctor or a social worker. In other words, they're asked to go get treatment and then talk to someone who can refer them to services that would try and improve their life. In the years since 2001, there's been a dramatic drop in addiction to hard drugs. HIV has dropped because people aren't injecting with dirty needles. Overdoses have dropped. Jailings have dropped. The decriminalization has to be linked to a range of other services that can then work together. You're talking about health, psychiatry, employment. Decriminalization means these different bodies can work together, but also takes away some of the stigma associated with drugs. And with the right intervention, society can help that person, but then also stop the consequences of their drug taking, harming their families, their friends, and the rest of their community. The Portuguese model isn't perfect because Portugal's still an unequal society, and governments have been dragging their feet in terms of funding for services. I mean, it costs money to build supervised injection centres, to build welfare clinics, to build outreach projects to fund the type of services that need to be in place to make the criminalisation effective. But here in Ireland, 75% of cases before the courts are to do with possession. It means 11,486 cases just last year. I mean, one person was up in front of the court for the possession of two euros worth of cannabis. I mean, surely that's ridiculous. Decriminalisation has to be linked to a whole range of measures that improve the lives of working class people and give people hope that they can find employment, that they can find jobs, that their kids will have a future. It's when people fall into despair that they turn to drugs. And while a minority turn to heroin or cocaine, the vast majority of working class people are self-medicating with alcohol. And the only way to remove that feeling of powerlessness, that feeling of alienation, is to empower working class people to participate more in society, to get more out of society, to be rewarded for the work that they do and the contributions they make. So yes, we should decriminalise drugs. It will make life better, not only for addicts, but for people like my grandmother who were mugged as a consequence of someone feeding a habit. It will make our communities more cohesive, but it has to take place in the context of a working class fight back for the wealth of society to be directed towards improving our communities.